Welcome to Maddie's Mental Health Podcast, aiming to spread awareness on mental health by sharing the real life stories. All right, welcome to Maddie's Mental Health Podcast. Today we have um, Mrs. Michelle Willette and uh, Victoria Phoenix here, all the way from Salt Lake City. How are you guys doing? So good. Thank you so much for having us, Maddie. This is very awesome. We're excited. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for reaching out. Um, why don't I let you guys introduce what it is you do? Well, um, so a little bit about us. Um, we are the co-founders of a company called Balance Your Path um, uh, that we started um, just a little under two years ago. Right around two years. Two, about yeah, two right years right now. The two-year mark. Uh, we are sisters. And um, we grew up in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. um, but we are now here in um, Salt Lake City, Utah, um, northern Utah. A um, uh, little bit about our history. Um, you know, we, like I said, we were raised in Los Angeles uh, by pretty typical parents who poorly ran their own company, mm-hmm. um, which kind of put us put us in various situations. Um, right. And at one point we actually became homeless on right. the streets of Los Angeles. And if you've ever oh. been to Los Angeles, you know, that's not any place you want to be homeless. You just, you just don't want to be there. Um, and sure. uh, so we, we had these parents who um, we grew up watching them react to their life from a place of lack and fear. And um, we were raised in a perpetual state of unwellness mm-hmm. and um stability wasn't there and we knew we wanted it and we knew we needed something else in our lives and through trial and error we created that stability but we were on a path right looking for wellness looking for life that um, had some kind of meaning and some kind of substance to it correct and that has kind of led us to where we are today okay yeah very awesome i want to say thanks again for reaching out and um finding the podcast on the internet. It's always amazing when it's found in, in different places as we, we talked about before we, we did the podcast um, over here in the East Coast of Canada. Um, so you guys have your company. We do. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the name of the company? Balance Your Path. Balance Your Path. And you guys are also authors. We are. So um, we, we're lots of things, actually. Yeah. Um, we're mindfulness teachers, we're, we're wellness coaches, uh, but our primary focus is, is, is writing at the moment and, and putting um, kind of the knowledge that we have out into the world for those seeking it. Right. Right. Um, so Just going back to how you got into doing these things, just from from that point um, leading up until now, being homeless in LA, where does that bring you till today? And how did you guys come come on that path leading to today? Well, that is a good question. That is a complex question. (laughs) Right. Uh, Um, Coming from that kind of a background, right? The stability was the biggest thing. And so at a very young age, we had to create that, you know, find career paths and things like that to create the financial well-being that we didn't have growing up. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't our path to wellness. That wasn't. No, that was more of the, the, the society's idea of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get a job and you're supposed to, you know, pay your bills and you're supposed to go grocery shopping and you're right, you know, things like that. But, but there, the happy part of that was something that we had to search for. And, And I think, um, it began with our kids. With the kids, yeah, right. I'm going to say it started with the kids. Um, we but, have five beautiful, wonderful children, uh, young adults between the now. Young adults, really, between the two of us, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, um, growing up, we started seeing the anxiety and um, the ADHD and the depression and all of these things within them. And um, my oldest was born in 83. So back then, there I don't even think there was a word for what he was going through. And so I had to just start digging and start searching because um, I, I didn't want to put him on medication, which is what the doctors were telling me was the best strategy. Now, um, <clears throat> the little you... disclaimer here before we go on, Maddie, yeah. we're not medical doctors not, no. and we're in no way suggesting by that comment that we 
recommend what we're doing over medication. A lot of people need it, have it. Mm -hmm. What we're, what we offer is really a, a side-by-side for whatever other coping methods that people are using. Right. Um, right. Just to, you know, kind of throw that out there. Right. Yes, of um, course. I think, I think from what, from what you said that you were just looking for alternative methods, you knew that, okay, there's something deeper going on here and I need to look into it more. It's not just about, I'm going to put, I'm going to throw um, medication at my child. It's more about like what's actually going on. And mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's interesting. And uh, like, where did you look? Cause I know like, like you said in the eighties, there might not even been a word. It wasn't like the forefront of the conversation yeah, it as it is today. <laughs> right. It, there was no Googling. There was, there was going to the library. There was talking to people. There was, um, encyclopedias. I mean, I, I, there really wasn't a lot of information out there. I started looking at, um, spiritual healers and I started looking at meditations and things like that. Um, because there just wasn't a whole lot of resources available out there. Now, when my daughter came along, it was a little bit easier, right? Um, because I had done a lot of digging and I'd done a lot of research. And so um, there was a little bit more information that I had. Um, and so um, we were able to, um, there was, there were certain things that we would do with them. There was, there was a um, practice daily meditations that we would do. There were grounding exercises. There were breathing exercises. Um, we just took whatever we could find and started implementing these things into their lives to help just calm the mind down and bring, bring the focus back right. so that it wasn't just, you know, these synapses is going off and, and, and causing them to just go into these bouts of anxiety, which could be pretty tremendous at times. For, for both of my kids. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. I got to say to you guys did send me a copy of your book, the five steps to wellness. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did read through it. I got to say, it's pretty, it's pretty great, but you guys have been able to, to put together and I did go through it. I think it's very beneficial. It will be very beneficial for anyone who reads it. Thank you. So maybe we could just continue with that. Like where did, so you, you starts with the kids and then what's, what's your path? I know that you guys have kind of went through a lot of training and things like that, but mm-hmm. what led you on this to where you are now? Uh, well, um, beyond the kids and mine, mine are younger than hers. And when mine showed up, uh, both of mine um, at the age of 11, both of my daughters are now 24, the age of 11, both of them had, huge traumas. One was the victim of violent crime and one was abandoned by her biological family. So those, those things came into play, pushing the boundaries even further of the information that we had to go seeking. And that's really kind of when we started seeking out more education for ourselves. Mm -hmm. What can we do? And almost immediately we started getting people outside of our family. Oh, according to Ashford.org. Sorry. Okay. That's totally okay. <laughs> okay. The speaker wake up there. It's okay. <laughs> she, there she, she, she decided to come on and She's play with us. Um, third, so third guest. <laughs> fourth guest. Uh, so That's like funny. what I was saying, we had started getting um, folks coming from the outside then. Mm. They started seeing that we were helping the kids, right? And so their friends, their families um, started noticing that that things were happening in a positive way for our kids. And we mm-hmm. started getting folks reaching out to us. Hey, can you help me? Hey, can, what did you, you know, do? How what did, did you, you do? How My did you child do suffers this way. What can you suggest? And that led us to start putting information in more of a formal format so that we could give it to people. Here's some exercises you can, you can try, you know, here's a recording of just our conversation. So you can relive this and those kinds of things. And and, and so at that point, we started talking about, you know, this is good information and maybe we should be putting it out there. Maybe. And, <laughs> and, and started getting our certifications. That's where we started getting, right. you know. The, we, we thought if we wanted to put it out there, we needed to have some kind of an educational background that showed not only do we have this life experience that fell into it, but that we actually know what we're talking about. So we started gaining certifications and talking about mm-hmm. building a company and putting this information out. Mm-hmm. And then COVID hit. And then it was, then we saw that there was an immediate need. 
Oh my gosh. All of these folks um, that were already suffering with mental unwellness at some level, mm -hmm. it got so much worse for them. And we saw it immediately, we saw it within our own family. We started seeing it a lot on social media oh with my gosh. coworkers and things. There was a lot of fear and there was a lot of um, hopelessness, hopelessness right that <clears throat> we thought this is we no, we can't have this we can't we, wait we can't have this there's and, there's a better way and we wanted to get that information out there and that's when we started putting it in book form and getting it we've been pushing it ever since mm -hmm. all the way through covid so that's really yeah. awesome that's a really awesome pivot because it yeah, like you're totally right there's so much fear and so much you know, when it comes to mental health, I think just everything, right? Like depression, right. anxiety, alcoholism, addiction, mm -hmm. probably, you know, you think about people in abusive situations and now they're stuck inside all the time in a house. So much stuff going on. So I think that's really awesome and beautiful that you guys are able to pivot at that time. You know, a lot of people might have not pivot. Some people didn't pivot. Some people like, okay, how can I? How can I make a change here? How can I right. pivot to be able to help someone, even though the situation is different now? Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. You guys were doing uh, seminars before, is that correct? Before COVID hit? Yeah, we started not necessarily, well, I guess it's kind of a seminar. We started doing these, these live trainings locally where we would, um, you know, write out a venue and invite people to come in for a day's training on some of the things that are in the five steps to wellness. Some other things, we have some other little guides that go along with that, that we, um, that we were really focusing on during those. Mm -hmm. And those weren't really well, but of course that had to end the second that COVID hit. And so um, then now we're trying to rebuild that on a on kind of a webinar situation where we can be putting those out and it helps us get to more people outside of our general area. So that is our next step is to get some more live trainings out there. Right. Okay. So you start writing the book. So the five steps of wellness, was that the first book that you guys put together? Yes. Yes. It is one of five books total that we have that are all very much kind of interlinked. They're individual reads for sure, but definitely play into each other. But it was the first one that we did. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think we can get into it. Like for someone listening that doesn't, doesn't know what wellness is, they're struggling in life. Um, and they want to start going down this path. Like what have you seen and what would you, what would be the first step, um, that you would advise someone to go down or yeah i i think the very first step and and this would be for anyone uh, but especially those who do find that they're challenged with some kind of mental unwellness right um i don't like to use the word mental health issues or uh, there's a stigma around it right and mm -hmm. we're trying to get rid of that and mm -hmm. But those who have other challenges beyond just the day-to-day -day challenges, right? Um, the, the, the needing to calm the cluttered mind. That's really where it needs to start is learning how to declutter our thoughts and our words. And if we can do that and start to learn how to direct our focus mm -hmm. in a very um, purposeful way, building a life in wellness, which is, which is all things, right? The way that you live, the way that you interact, the, your actions, your behaviors, kind of all things. Mm -hmm. It has to start from the inside. That's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. And um, it all starts with this, this ability to direct your focus to purpose. Your focus. Really not, not controlling the thoughts so much as redirecting and, and bringing them to a, a better focus. Right. So um, I think we agree that that's, the first step. That's the first step. Right. That makes a lot of sense, especially in today's world, I think. Which is why on in the book, the five steps to wellness, the very first step of the five steps is visualization. Mm -hmm. And that is a kind of an in-depth training on how to use your mind's eye, if you will, to visualize something, even if it's not right in front of you. And it's a, it's a lesson in building your mindful muscle. Mm -hmm to go where you want it to go and see what you want it to see 
and it all really kind of starts from there. So. What would be a first step to decluttering your mind in your guys' opinion? Wow. Well, um, <laughs> good. That's a good question. That is a great question. And, um, if, if this, if we were 40 years ago, I, I would say, um, uh, the, the example would be completely different, but of course, in, in the world in which we live in, um, we, as a human species has a attention span of approximately seven seconds, which is less than a goldfish. In 1977, our attention span was 34 minutes. Seriously. Absolutely. Yes. Seriously. Um, and that what? has changed over this yeah. 40 year period because of the, the inlet of so much information, right? Mm -hmm. The technological Expansion age has technology. happened in the last few years, right? Yeah. Oh my God. And so our generation, right? We are decidedly a bit older than you are, Maddie. We were raised in a non-technological world and it became a part of our world as we grew up but the, the generations after mm -hmm. us don't have that they were raised in this this age where they are constantly they have this influx of information coming at them at such a high speed and it hasn't been long enough for the human brain to evolve to accept that and be able <clears throat> to process that kind of influx of information so the, the first stop the, needs to be, how do we help? How do we show someone how to take all of that information that's in their mind, right? And in most cases, if they're out Googling on the internet, how do I meditate? How do I anything? The first thing they're gonna hear is clear your mind. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. You can't do it. It's not physically possible to clear your mind. So we've taken a completely different approach in that we want them to accept what's in their mind, right? That's mm -hmm. the first step is to find yourself in a space where you can let those thoughts go crazy and have all that information going around in their mind and then learning to identify the thoughts that mm -hmm. are that serve them best mm -hmm. learning and be able to draw their focus into that which naturally allows those that don't serve them to fall away as that focus builds right so it's 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 about it's it's about finding finding that place of calm it's about um letting these these thoughts <clears throat> excuse me about letting these thoughts um sort of just drift through, I think is, is a good way of putting it. You, 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 okay, here's a thought. Is this serving me right now? No, I'm going to let this pass through. Is, what about this thought? Is there something I can do to control what's happening right now in this situation? If I can, great. I will. If I can't, then I'm going to let it drift on through because there's, it's out of my control at this particular time. So it's a matter of just taking these thoughts right and finding which ones serve you at the moment, which ones don't serve you at the moment. It's a practice, right? It's something that you can't, you know, it doesn't have to do overnight. overnight. You right. have to practice it's like any muscle. It has to be worked and practiced and, and, and strengthened. Right. Can I ask you guys something? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just around seven seconds to 34 minutes. Can we go back to that for a second? Like that okay. just oh, yeah. blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that has a fair bit to do with mental health today? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. The percentage of people 50 years ago that suffered from mental illness was significantly lower. And with each generation from that point, we see a higher and higher percentage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are absolutely, and of course the studies show, and we've done a lot of research on this, that it is absolutely uh, because we are at the dawn of this technological age mm -hmm. and a hundred years from now, our brains will adapt. We as a human species will, you know, be able to adjust mm -hmm. and grow into that to where those new generations will have the ability to process that information and, and as quickly as it's coming in, mm -hmm but we can't right now. We're at the and, beginning and, and these going, generations are suffering because of it. Going back to, to when we were younger, um, again, we talked about this earlier. We couldn't just Google something. If we wanted to learn something, 
we had to um, find a book. We had to talk to people. We had to take that information in, in a much slower um, process. Manner, right. And 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 so our, your your mind is thinking in a much slower, more deeper, more concentrated effort. If if that makes sense. Yeah. And, of course. and and we don't. And that's just not the way we gain information now. It's just it's coming at us so fast. You think it would? We don't. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's all, you're fine. I, I was just going to say, you think it would? It would have to be more rational if you had more time to think about the information. Correct. Right. Yes. You know, like more you, time to process you can literally what it is that you're looking at. Exactly. Like you think you could Google, you could literally Google a hundred things in a minute, mm -hmm. or I could like have one thing in my mind and think about like why that's important, why I'm looking it up and what it means. And, not, and then when you finally get to the answer and then it's like, oh, that's, and then you have all this time to digest it mm -hmm. where it's like, if we're looking through our phone every day, which we all do, there's right. maybe like, you know, like there's negative comments. There's like all these posts, there's riots going on here. There's something going on there. There's, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be like a lot of times there is a lot of negativity there, but it doesn't even have to be necessarily negative it's just there's so much information coming at there's you at so once. Much. you can't even digest it right and, and that's get, really the core of what what we teach maddie that's that's where we start with every one of our clients everyone who is just reading the books it's about stopping in the moment being in a mindful place considering what you're thinking and taking the time to digest it to understand it mm -hmm act on it if it needs to be acted upon Excuse or moving me. it out and getting back to that place where we're actually digesting information so that we can make great choices for our life right we can make better choices we can um we can be better friends we can be better parents we can be better people we can love ourselves more because we we're processing information in a different way and we're not letting this influx affect us in a negative way there's nothing we can do about it, right? We live in a technological age and I personally, you have a podcast, so you'd be lost without it, right? We mm -hmm. we now depend on it for everything mm -hmm. that we do. Yeah. So we, it's part of who we are. So the, the most significant thing that we can do is learn how to use it to our benefit and not have it negatively affect us. And these this recent generation struggles with that mm -hmm. because there's no one there to say, hey, you don't need to let all this in. You only need to let little pieces of it in. That's where we come in. We're hoping that we can just share with people mm -hmm. how to filter it, how to filter it, how to filter it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's beautiful and really important. It's kind of like, yeah, there's no cap on it for, for mostly everybody. You're just like constantly every day. Right. And then, there's like an addiction element to it too, where. Oh, there sure is. We have that actually there's um, in one of the smaller guides, protect yourself with love. Is it that one that talks about the addiction to technology? Yes, I believe it is. And there's a, some personal stories in there and, and some really great insight into um, how it becomes an addiction before we, we don't even know it, but it outlines. Yeah. So that people are, and there'll be an aha moment, I can guarantee from just about any way there, oh my gosh, I do that. Oh my gosh, right? So, because that's part of it. Yeah, just the whole like, first thing we wake up, check your phone, last thing you do before you go to sleep, 100 times in between. Yep. <laughs> right, you're addicted to the notification, you get a little dopamine hit. Right, <laughs> that's exactly what we put in the book. It's yeah. right, it's this little happy juice, right? right. It yeah. does, it makes us all just keep going back for it. Mm -hmm. It's true. Right. Okay. So bringing awareness, um, bring awareness to your thoughts and basically protecting, protecting your energy, protecting, filtering what your, what your, what your intake is as far as right. information. Mm -hmm. Right. That would be the first few steps you'd recommend for decluttering your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It's all about, um, it's a power trip, if you will. 
it's about taking your power back right now. We are giving right. our power away on a daily basis to our phones, to our laptops, to our devices of all kinds. And it's about taking that back. It's about reclaiming and, and having the power over those things in our lives and choosing for ourselves what's good for us and what isn't. Mm -hmm. Right. And I like that word power too, because it really is that. And it really mm -hmm. is energy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's just sucking the energy. You know, if you see like 10 negative things, like you're, that's a lot of energy. You just, that just got taken away from you. That you right. Could have, you know, it could ch alter the whole course of your day. It can. It can. It can. And in, in so many instances, because it is coming so fast, right? And like you said, hundreds of times a day, we're looking at our phone. Um, and I'll use TikTok for an example, if we can, you know, you go and you open your TikTok and there's things that's on your for your page and sure some of those things you've invited in by liking something and they're funny, but ultimately there's other things that flow mm -hmm. and you may stop and spend that 30 seconds looking at it before you swipe on and think, but that really isn't for me, but you've still heard it. You've still seen it. And even though you're, you may be thinking that doesn't pertain to me and you move on past it at some point it's setting with you. And the more you do that, the more you're, you're telling your brain, you're building this auto response to go seeking that type of information. And it's all behind the scenes. You don't even know you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's some powerful stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah a lot of it is in the subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And all that, all that negativity stays mm -hmm. with the subconscious, even though you may think like, oh, whatever, I'll, I'll brush that off. But it, it, all, right. it all matters. It all sticks with you. It all lingers, especially for those that suffer, especially at high levels with anxiety and depression. They cling to their thoughts, right? They hold them dear. And so even those little tiny snippets at some point will come back up when they're thinking, you know, oh my gosh, if I do this, what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, those little pieces of information of how this could turn out so badly show back up for them. And, and that's, you know, so detrimental to them, even just getting through their day. Mm -hmm. So helping them to learn to not take that information in and let it flush right past them and focus on what mm -hmm. serves them best. We, we've seen great successes with that, with folks that suffer with, with high anxiety. We have four, maybe all of our kids at so, on some level suffer with anxiety for sure, but Yes, two or three of them were really, really severe. Um, and and the, of course, those were our first test subjects. So we were we were lucky to see that that those test kinds subjects. of exercises, they were our first guinea subjects. pigs, guinea pigs. <laughs> our little guinea pigs. Sure. Yeah. Do what mom says. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> we actually um, developed some exercises. Well, one of them, I think, was already out there. We've just kind of um, adapted it. But there's a couple of exercises that we do on the daily. We do on the daily our kids do on the daily. Um, my son will still reach out to me. I'm mom, I'm in Walmart and <laughs> I, can you, can we, can you just walk me through, just bring me back down? And, and so I'll say, okay, Mikey, you know what? Um, let's walk Here outside. Go. Here we go. We're going to walk outside and we'll go through this exercise to bring him back down to a place where he's able to walk back into Walmart and do what he needs to do. That's the severity sometimes and what so exercise is that been very beneficial and they're they're we, they're very short yeah we have a couple of little exercises and if you've you've got the time we'd love to share them with your with your listeners maddie um one of them is called be in the moment and it's really just um a, a relaxation moment but it um exercise and it really helps to start develop that mindful muscle it helps to um start the process of learning how to sift your thoughts. And so really it's a, it's a five minute exercise. It can be done anywhere in your car, at the office, at home, at school, wherever. And it is just a, finding a place where you can sit comfortably and it does not need to be a quiet space. It does not, you don't need to shut the world out, but it's just closing your eyes. And it's really just allowing all the thoughts and the sounds and the outside stimuli to just be there. You're not trying to shut it off because that is futile. You can't shut it off. Mm -hmm. Allowing it to be there, <clears throat> taking it all in. And then like Victoria mentioned just a few minutes ago, start really, it's almost like lining up your thoughts. Okay, now mm -hmm. we've got one in front of us, right? And you're thinking about this. 
does it serve me? Is it something I'm in control of? Can I control that today? If I can't, I'm going to let that one go and I'm going to go on to the next one. And it's about going through each one of them and asking yourself, is this positive for me? Is it healthy for me? Can I control it? That's the big thing. If it's something that I am unable to control, those need to go away because they're, they're, just, they're just eating away at us. And it's about sitting there and sifting through that and drawing your focus to those two or three that I can control or that are positive for me. And even if they float away, try to bring them back. Try to practice and, oh, you know what? A second ago, I was thinking about, you know, this thing. What are we gonna have for dinner? What are we gonna have for dinner? I'm gonna bring that back and give that a little bit more focus. And then letting it go again and going through some more thoughts. But now I'm gonna bring that dinner back. (laughs) What should we have as a side dish? I think potatoes, okay, and then it goes. And you sift through a few more. I want to talk a little bit more about dinner and it's learning how to draw your focus to something that's positive. And it's that little exercise and it literally can be done anywhere, anytime um, and allowing all the stimuli around you because that never stops. And in these exercises, unlike some of the meditations that you see online or some of the other educational pieces that might be out there where it says you need to be in a quiet space and you need to shut off all the noise and close the door and meditate and clear your mind. That's not the world we live in. That is not the right. world we live in. And right. although I enjoy calm, quiet meditation, mm-hmm. and I created that in my world when I can, for the most part, my meditation happens when the city streets are on fire outside and the, you know, mm-hmm. the coolers going off and the microwaves binging and dogs are barking. <laughs> that's, that's normal life. And we have to learn to create our wellness inside of normal life because that won't change. So that one kind of helps with that. <clears throat> Another one is called the senses in action. And this one, um, this one, just use your senses and, and, and it's, and it can be used by anyone, even if those don't have all of their senses, because like, let's say someone loses their ability to see other senses take and become They're heightened. heightened. Right? right. And this one is just being in the moment and looking around you and noticing five things that you can see four things that you can touch three things that you can hear two things that you can smell and one thing that you can taste and take your time with this and just take your time. And I do it sitting here at work and I'm okay. Well, I can touch my computer. I can taste my coffee. I can smell my candle burning. And it's those things that again, train our mind to be in the moment and to recognize what's happening in this moment and being able to be calm and aware and digest the information and process it as it's coming into us. That's really what these little exercises are all about is just learning that first Mm -hmm. step on how to process the information that's around us and in our heads. So, Right. And with the senses, it really seems like it's bringing you into the moment, into the now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what it does. Right. And it connects you to one of the things that we have seen with um, those that suffer with mental illness is they feel disconnected. Right. Yeah. They feel like they're alone. They don't feel like they're a part of what's going on. That one helps them connect to what's going on right in front of them. And it helps them to build that connection again, that I am a part of this. I'm a part of what's happening right now in this moment. That that, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And and the nice thing experience, I'm sure. Sorry, go ahead there. I'm sorry. I was talking over you. No, that's okay. (laughs) I think we should start at the same time. You go ahead there. Um, I was they're 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 very powerful in and and they're so concentrated that 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 they don't take a, a great deal of time to do them. Right. So there's something you can repeat throughout the day if you feel you you need to. You know, if you're having a day where there's just a lot of interaction from different things, you can take and do these like the 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 five um, the five senses. You can do that throughout the day. You know, I I know I only did it two minutes ago, but I'm going to do it again. I mean, right. I did it a half hour ago, but I'm going to do it again. Right. And it brings you back to that mindful place. It brings you back to that focused place. Mm-hmm. And right. so it's just, it's exercising that muscle that has become atrophied. Right. Yeah. We used it a lot in the seventies. We don't use it anymore. Mm-mm. 
and just yeah. like a runner, right? If they're running and jumping and 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 running the race, their muscles stay firm and 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 active. Mm-hmm. And the second they stop running, those muscles start to atrophy. Same thing has yeah. happened to our mindful muscle. Yeah, we just don't use it enough. We have to rebuild it. To that point. And like, I think that's so interesting. Like when you think about, like, it's always interesting to look back at the root of the problem, right? Mm -hmm. My question for you guys, just like reflecting back on your lifetime, have you seen it? Like, can you, can you like, can you see it in your interactions with people? Like maybe from when you were younger around that time, like, like, I don't know if it's, because it happened gradually over time, but I just often think like sometimes, you know, when you hang out with like an older generation person, like I think about like my grandparents and mm-hmm. I just think about like how, yeah, like their, their patience, there's so much more patient, like the, mm-hmm. so everything's so much more slower and there's just, it's a different demeanor altogether. Mm-hmm. And I guess my question for you guys would be like, can you think of the time <laughs> in your life when you, you started to see this shift? I imagine it was gradual, but I I can say I was 19 years old when I started to see the shift. Oh, really? That was the very first time that I had employment that had a computer. Okay. Yeah. And it took me from a place of, and I was a bookkeeper. So I was doing financials manually. I kept a ledger. Everything was handwritten. I wrote out all the checks for the day for the company. And then we got this computer and all of this information had to then be input into the computer, which again was kind of a slow process. But then getting the information was much quicker, obviously. Mm -hmm. Definitely not compared to today because it wasn't a great computer, but back then we thought it was the best thing ever. But gaining that information then became quicker. And I found when that information was in the system and we could access it quicker, I had less to do. I had to fill my day with more things because I wasn't manually, right? I wasn't, I wasn't taking my time creating this information. It was being keyed in. And so my workload got bigger because Mm -hmm. I had more time on my hands, more responsibility was part starting to put on so that my eight hours was filled. And that was a progression that I saw as my career progressed that I had more responsibility put on my shoulders. I had more to do. I had more stress. I had more responsibility in other people looking to me to gain information. And, and it, it Mm. took me to a very heightened level of pressure in my career. Wow. Yeah. Uh, That's a really good example. That's really interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. The interesting thing about that too is like, you know, just in the time you had that job, it went from like physically writing it out to putting it in a computer. It's hard to go backwards, isn't it? Like if you, if you were to think like, I'm going to go back to writing all of a sudden that's like, well, this takes forever. You know, it's like just that quick. It's like, that's how fast patient change our patient patients changes. Why we, we embrace all of this, this, um, the speed, right? We embrace the fact that this is easier now. It's quicker now. That is all wonderful and good. But somewhere along the line, I think we forgot to look at what did we lose? Mm-hmm. What did we lose by, by speeding everything up so quickly? Mm-hmm. And it may not be as significant to most when we look at the losses versus the gains with technology, right? Um, but some of those losses, even though they're smaller, the amount of them are smaller, they're pretty significant. And one of them, the biggest one, in my opinion, in our opinion, is this ability to process this kind of information and what it has done to our newer generations Mm -hmm. in creating just this anarchy for them. And again, at some point we will evolve as a human species a hundred years from now, we'll catch up and it will be the norm for our brains to go at that level of speed but because it's just happened in the last 40 years, we're, we haven't evolved yet. And, and this, this current generation, especially maybe the one just before they're the, they're the ones that are, they're the sufferers, yeah. right? They're the mm-hmm. ones that are, that are getting the biggest hit because yeah. they don't know what to do. They are, they're, they're, they're being impacted in a way that their brain can't manage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think back to even just my own life. Like I was born, I was born in '95, and like I remember being growing up as a kid. Like I didn't have a cell phone. I had like a shitty watch, and I just came home at the time I had to be home, or when it got dark out, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I can remember like I think about this now, just because um, of all the, the thinking I do with with technology and stuff, and how it impacts anxiety. But like spending days just out in the woods like a full day with my friends like out by like a lake or a river or whatever and just doing like adventuring all day going out that was my whole childhood was that and i think about how that grounded me you know mm -hmm. and i think about like kids today they all have phones probably and tablets and mm -hmm. gaming. You know, gaming right yeah. mm -hmm. there was some of that when i was growing up but it was like on the back burner you know i just right. think like mm -hmm. Man, that must just be. I mean, to grow up in that, you know, like it's hard enough now. Like, came in when I was a little older, but, and to have that like from the get go, right? You, you can totally see how that would affect your mental health. Sure, absolutely. My 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 two girls again, twenty four years old. Oh, they're indoor girls. <laughs> as much as I tried uh, to get them out, because I, we grew up out, right? Out. That's out, fresh yeah. air. I'm cleaning the house. Grounded. Get out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. There yeah. was just too much keeping them in because it was the norm for them. That was what their friends were doing. That's what was happening in school. That's what was happening in their social circles, and they just because that was the generation in which they were raised into or born into mm -hmm. that we stay in and we watch TV and we <clears throat> game and we play on our phones. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, it's society as, 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 you know, builds that out for us. Right. And, right. Yeah. and right. as much as we have gone through and tried to help our kids kind of through this and they are the better for it, for sure. They still have to live in it. Mm -hmm. It's still their world. All we can do is help them cope with it and learn because we can't create their brains to evolve any faster. Um, you know, we haven't cured them of all the things that they're going through. All we can do is keep offering them options to help them cope through it. That's all we can do at this point, but they're coping, right? And we're hoping that we can help others cope uh, because it will, it's not going to go away. Life mm -hmm. as we know it is, is what it is. Right. For sure. Yeah. You mentioned decluttering your mind is a big first step, big thing that you see. What are some other things that um, that are sort of the first steps or the biggest things, the biggest hurdles for most people? Um, I would say that listening or paying attention to your emotions, we all have an emotional guidance system. And if we're paying attention to that, um, then it's easier to to take those emotions and um, understand why we're feeling them. So if all of a sudden you're fearing something or you're, or, or, or let's say that this, um, this emotional, um, feeling of fear is, is all, all of a sudden there, if you can stop and say, okay, why, why, what, what am I, what am I afraid of? What brought that on? What, what, what caused that fear to all of a sudden infiltrate into my being, and, and, and the more you can do that, the more you can pay attention to your emotions and understanding wh wh where they're coming from and why you're feeling them, the more you're going to be able to um, understand. And put yourself in a healthier position. Exactly, in place. exactly. Yeah. So that would be another important step because we have emotions and there's a reason we have emotions and they are brought about by what we're thinking. And if we can connect that and understand that, then we have a better um, ability to to calm and bring our focus back again. And to use them correctly. Right. You know, we use emotions in so many ways throughout our day and some in positive ways and some in hurtful ways mm -hmm. because we don't understand them and we may argue with our significant other and say things we don't mean. Well, why do we do that, right? It put us in a bad situation. And really coming to that root cause and finding out why we're having those emotions, it helps us to use them better. Mm -hmm. And in our life and, and, the, and those around us, right? Mm -hmm. It helps us to be emotionally intelligent at work and at home and very important. Yeah, like that can, mani like that can manifest itself in so many ways, right? Like you mentioned arguing with your spouse 
or even um you know turning to like kind of sedating yourself like getting intoxicated because you can't handle your emotion or right just any negative behavior you can think of it's like this mm -hmm. you feel negative inside and you don't know how to deal with it mm -hmm. right so you find a vice or you find some that gets out in some way right and which we see a lot of right especially in today's society there's a lot of vices being used there's there's a lot of that going on this self-medicating right this yeah. finding something that makes me feel better and 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 although some of it i think is healthy and we're, we won't go into a lot of detail on that um a lot of it isn't and yeah. and and it's really about shifting to better coping mechanisms better mm -hmm. methods and what we are sharing is very holistic and it's very natural mm -hmm. And it's about taking us back to a time when mental well-being, it was, it was actually, I mean, that's the natural state of being for yeah. all human. That, that's our natural state is to be in this healthy, happy, you know, productive. And we've lost that. And it's about bringing us back to that um, in, in the most normal, natural, healthy way. Natural way. Right. And we have the ability within every single one of us to be able to do that. Right. Once we understand that we can, and that's what we show you, we have, we show you the tools. Right. Right. To gain to that power, to, to that. understand that you do have the power to, to take your life and do with it what you please. Right. And everyone does have it. Yeah. I really like that. Cause I, yeah. Even just the first chapter of the book, like the visualization aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of self-limiting belief. Like you said that, that you do have the power to do whatever you want or build a life that you want. There's so much self-limiting belief and it all goes back into what we've talked about so far, but there's all these negative things, all these negative emotions, the attention span, all that stuff. And you can't even like, most people don't take the time, myself included. This is something I've kind of done recently in my own life is just take the time to visualize what I actually want mm -hmm. in the future and not hold myself back with it. Mm -hmm. right. Not have that self limiting belief like, oh, I couldn't do that. Or, you know, it's you're, you're scared of what your potential really is. That's right. Yeah. That's very true. There's a lot of fear That's around that, true. actually. Fear of success, fear of change. Mm -hmm. Fear of failure. Right? Right. It all comes in. It's almost like all those things all at once. Yeah. Yep. And there's so, and it's like, yeah, I think it gets pushed off. And then you never even take that step. Because like, I, I really like that first step because that's people, you know, I think most people don't take that first step just to visualize, like, what do I actually want? Right. It's almost a shame. Like, that should be. Yeah. You, know, you could always like blame the school system. It's, you always point fingers, but it's like, it should be at the forefront. Like we right. should, that should be okay to do that. Right. It should mm -hmm. be okay to say oh, that. Yeah. It should, Think you know about I mean? it. When you're young in school, it's, you know, pay attention. Your, your mind is wandering. I need you to, to, to pay attention to what you're doing right now. And, yeah. and not, and not, you, and, and that's kind of taking away that imagination because yeah. we're told, oh, you're, you're, you're drifting, you're wandering. Where are you right now? Right. Grow up. Stop. Yeah. Stop daydreaming. Stop daydreaming. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. the imagination that we all need to hold on to because yeah. that's our ability to visualize. Mm -hmm. That's where yeah. it comes from. Right. Yeah. I need to be able to see what that perfect house looks like in the five steps. That's what we try to do is we put them in their perfect life, house, car, things around them. And, and, and we do that because home is, Home is home, home right? Is home. It's an easy thing to visualize, <laughs> yeah. um, but it takes imagination, and 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 that's part of something that we again have lost. Yeah, as children, we have it, and then it it's slowly something that we lose over time because we are told it's time to grow up. Right. It's time to start. You, you need know. to focus. You you have now responsibilities. You can't be childish any longer. You have to do this. It's and time it's to important. get to work. Why are you daydreaming? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. what, so what we're saying is daydream. <laughs> yeah. We're saying bring daydream. it back. Bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think I brought this up on this podcast before, but it, I think there was a study I read one time around like creativity in children. Mm -hmm. And it was just like what we just talked about where the earlier grades, 
I think it was around storytelling. I think it was around storytelling or I think it was storytelling. I don't, it might've been drawing, but I think it was storytelling. They basically tested them in each grade. The early grades, it was like, you know, on the creativity scale, it was very high. Mm -hmm. And gradually as they got to the, the 12th grade, it just completely went away yeah. basically. Uh, where it would like the 12th yeah. grade, it was mostly gone for most students. Right. So the creativity is like, it's drawn out of us. Like it's, it's like this, this narrative that we have to grow up. We can't be creative. You have to be like straight right. to the point. And mm -hmm. right. I think the problem with that though, is like, cause at the end of the day, like you do have to work hard. That is the main thing. Right. So you can't have, you can't just not work, right. You can't just right. be in la la land all day, but I think the point, and maybe this is what you guys, um, maybe you could agree to this is like, if you don't visualize where you're going in the future, if you don't have that perfect life vision, then you're going to feel aimless day to day. Right. So if you can actually touch, feel, smell, all that stuff of exactly where you want to go. And I know in the book, you actually recommend setting reminders of all those things. Like, what does you want? And then set reminders, like to keep bringing yourself back because mm -hmm. once you have a clear vision of where you're going, then all you got to do is work backwards and all that day to day stuff seems it's way easier right, right? because it you have has a purpose it has a purpose right right it's not just the day-to-day -day, i'm just living paycheck to paycheck you put purpose into your life immediately yeah, yeah. And when you have purpose you have hope and when you have hope <clears throat> you can be more creative and you can easier easily manifest those things that you want in your life mm -hmm. and so it really it does it kind of builds all of that up Something that I've always told my kids is if you follow your passion, you'll always be happy. And right. You'll always yeah. succeed. Follow right. your passion. We're yeah. actually working on a, a new book for children, a mindfulness book. We've got, I've got a six year old granddaughter. And <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't have this information early on with our kids. We had to, yeah. we had to gain it. And really, so we couldn't start implementing it until teenage years and later before we really could <clears throat> offer them anything. But here right. we have this little six-year-old and um, a new guinea pig. <laughs> and what we want is <laughs> we subject. want her to grow up in a world that is flooded with technology, but not have the anxiety and not have the depression and not have all, all of those uh, stigmas that go along with, with what's happening in the world around her and to keep her creativity and to mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. what she wants out of life and to build those visions for herself. And, and so we do a lot of that. We do a lot of that now with her in just keeping that childlike imagination alive, a well, you know, just in her face all the time. And she's enjoying life. She's having a good time. Everybody's engaged with her and, and we read and we spend time thinking about things and we process it through mm -hmm. in a lengthy period of time. And I'm hoping that she will get to her early teenage years and she will not suffer the way that her aunts and uncles and mom does um, because we've started earlier with all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we think there is a really high probability of that being the case. Well, we're already seeing it. We're already seeing we're it. We're already seeing it in her. She's yeah. just happy. She is. She's just, she's just this happy, happy child. There's no stress. There's no, you know, so right. we'll see. That's awesome. Yeah. It's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. You think about like, what if every kid was given that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. what we'd like to do. We'd like to yeah. give that to every parent because again, it's not, it's not this lengthy cumbersome process. It's these little tiny things that if you just implement them every day mm -hmm. into your normal life, you're fostering this life of wellness in your children. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we're hoping for. And we want to get it in every parent's hands that we can. Mm -hmm. We want to get this information in everybody's hands that's seeking it because even though we're beyond child, you know, we're beyond and we're in these adult, you know, lives there are things that we can improve. There are things that we can make better. We can, we can have a more fulfilling, more hopeful existence and, and balance it better. Mm -hmm. Understand it better. Yeah. Understand it better. Yeah. 
Once you right. understand it, awareness is, and that's another first step. Once you're aware, become aware, because once you're aware, then you can start to learn. Right. Then you can start to go, okay, there's things I can do. Right. And awareness doesn't go away. Once you have it, you have it. You have it. Yeah. Once you, you're you're, it. you know you're this stuff, you're it, like, sure. oh, okay, right. Exactly. It's, um, it becomes a, a very easy thing to start implementing a lot of, a lot of this stuff into mm -hmm. your life because it just becomes, it becomes common sense at that point. Right. Yeah. Well, that's really awesome. And again, it's really awesome. You guys' mission and you guys' message. Thank you. Appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Like, as far as what you do, as far as your message to the audience? Well, I think as far as a message to the audience would go is to not stop seeking. The information that you seek is out there, whether it's mm -hmm. our information or not. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to just have a better life and whether you suffer with mental illness or you don't, if you just want to feel more hopeful and be more fulfilled in your life and be in find a better positive space, find your purpose, don't stop seeking because the information is out there. Um, as far as um, what we provide, uh, you know, we would actually like to offer some free copies of the book to your listeners, Maddie, if you would be so inclined, um, you know, if they want to share with you on the show or uh, email us directly, um, their email address, which of course we never share, we will never market to, it will just strictly be to send them a PDF version of the book. Um, we would love to get that in, in the hands of, of any of your listeners that would like to check it out and hopefully, um, you know, gain something positive for themselves out of it, for sure. That's awesome. Thanks so much. I, I'm sure we'll have some people that will take you up on that. And whoever does, will get a great benefit out of it. I, got, I just want to say again, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for reaching out. Um, yeah, and again, it's, it's amazing what you guys are doing and just really taking this on on your own from the start, from with your kids. And then now, like, just it's branched out to helping others, and and you know, you guys are doing it's great our things. Purpose. <laughs> it is. We found yeah. our purpose. We found our purpose. We, we just we just um, appreciate you so much, Maddie. Thank you so much for having us on, and uh, it, it's been great having this chat with you. And I hope some of your listeners, you know, have a takeaway that works for them. Oh, absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. I'm sure they will. So, so where can everyone find your stuff? What's your what's your website? Well, the website is balanceyourpath.com. It is under construction today. That will not always be the case. Uh, but all of our books are up on Amazon and Kindle version. So they can go to Amazon and type in my name or the five steps to wellness and it should come up. But I do have the author page uh, that they can go to and see all of the books that are available. So if they just type in Michelle Willette in an Amazon search bar, all of my information will come up and you'll find our author page there. Um, and then anyone who has questions or needs a little guidance or just yeah, more information, PDF version, just reach out to just reach out to us and they can reach us path. at contact at balanceyourpath.com. That's our email address. And uh, we welcome all questions, happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. We do not have an assistant that answers them for us. So if it takes us a minute to get back to you, <laughs> be patient, but, but it will be us. So. Okay. That's really awesome. Um, and so do you guys have social media pages as well? They can find you to follow. Absolutely. Balance your path is on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on, uh, TikTok. We are on Snapchat. Oh, yeah. We are on LinkedIn. We are hey, everywhere. <laughs> We're I love everywhere. It. I love it. <laughs> that whole technology thing. It's there. the technology it's, thing. We, we are in it. Sure. Yes. You bet. Yeah, for sure. I got to use it for good. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And that okay. exactly. And exactly. we're happy to, to share all those links too. If anybody wants to find us on any of those, I mean, searching me personally, Michelle will let on just about any of them should pull some of those up or balance your path on any of them. They should find us pretty easily, but I'm happy to share links uh, via email to anybody who's wanting to find us and follow us. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll share it all in the description. So anybody listening, it should be all in the description. I'll share all that stuff. Um, you should be able to find it there. Go check them out. They're doing great things. Just want to say thanks again, guys. Great talking thank to you guys. You. Thank you very much. It's been Enjoyed very exciting. It. Thank and, you. And uh, best of luck with everything. Really thank great you. what you guys you are doing. Too.
Thanks, Maddie. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Thank you.